In Health Watch, scientists say that they may be one step closer to eliminating the HIV virus in humans. Researchers from Temple University and the University of Nebraska say that they used a gene editing system to remove pieces of the virus's DNA from the infected cells. They combined the editing with a drug regime. The virus was successfully eliminated from nine of the 23 mice. So joining me now is the senior invest investigator of this study, Dr. Howard Gendelman. Dr. Gendelman, thank you so much for joining us. You are also the chairman and professor of the Department of Pharmacology and Experimental Neuroscience Science at the University of Nebraska Medical Center. Your um, business card must be, you know, a foot long because that's a pretty long title. Thank you. So, good morning, Anne Marie. Good, I'm, I'm good. happy to be part of the show. It's a, it's a stunning announcement when we heard it last week. Explain to us how this combination works to eliminate HIV, the gene editing and the drugs. Sure. Actually, it's the reverse. The, mm. the drug comes before the gene editing. And what we've done is to go into an animal where we've created a humanized mouse. So the actual mouse has a human immune system by transplantation of cord blood stem cells. So we're able to infect the animal and in multiple organs and tissues, the bone marrow, the spleen, the lymph nodes, the gut and the brain, there is uh, considerably high levels of viral growth. So the first thing that we do would be reflective of what we would do in a human. We treat with antiretroviral therapy, but in this case, we're using laser art, which is a modified form in which we can move the therapy to exact sites of viral replication or viral growth. So in essence, we're dampening down the virus considerably using this modified uh, therapy and following the maximal levels of viral restriction, which is the maximal levels in which we can hold virus at bay we then intervene with the CRISPR-Cas excision. The CRISPR-Cas excision allows us to actually cut out the HIV DNA, similar to what we would do if we were excising a bad gene, if HIV was a genetic impairment. So we cut it out uh, using very sophisticated molecular biological techniques. And in some of these animals, in nine out of 23, we would able to eradicate uh, or eliminate HIV infection in these mice. So you use the drugs to ensure that there's very little of the disease still in the mice, and then the gene editing to ultimately, in some cases, eliminate it completely. The drugs that you're using, are they the same antiretroviral drugs that are being used today, or is there something a little different about them? No, they're, they're exactly the same. What we do is we alter the distribution and the potency of the drug uh, by making crystals. We make drug crystals. So we change the physical chemical properties of the drug that allows them to reach sites of viral growth maximally. The other thing we've done is we're able to change the half-life so the drugs are available or bioavailable for longer periods of time so we can maximize the restriction and essentially dampen down the virus considerably or maximally so our excision therapies will work in the best manner possible. This is the first time that anyone has been able to eliminate HIV infection from any species. Uh, obviously, we have a long way to go before this can be applied to humans, but at least it provides us with proof of concept that HIV indeed can be eliminated. So of course, uh, you know, you sort of answered the question a little bit because the follow-up question is, when could we see trials on humans? When will this be available? All right. Well, we, that's the perennial and most important yeah. question is how can we take these observations in animals and ultimately translate them to a human being that's infected with HIV? Well, there are two remaining obstacles, Anne-Marie, that we have to overcome. The first obstacle is we must understand that we cannot leave a single HIV DNA in the human because HIV can grow again mm. once we stop therapy. 
So we're working in earnest towards a delivery system that will enhance our abilities to bring the CRISPR-Cas excision to sites of latent HIV with maximal impact, changing the vector, changing the routes, and changing the systems that we have to deliver what we've done in mice and enhance in the sensitivity and specificity uh, so we can maximize restriction or excision 100 percent. The other part that we have to overcome is we're dealing with gene manipulation. So we must understand that we cannot affect normal genes. When we intervene with the CRISPR-Cas, there is always the possibility that inherent or collateral genes or other genes that are adjacent to HIV can also be affected. So affecting the sensitivity but also the specificity of our CRISPR-Cas uh, system is really the uh, dog mark of where we're going next with this uh, research and research activity. We hope that we can move this forward next to larger animals, which are now in process at Temple University, and ultimately in humans within the next couple years. So we're excited. This is not decades now, we're talking years. I, I love to hear that. Can you talk a little bit, doctor, about why this virus has been such a challenge to sort of pin down? And, and we've, we've come a long, long way. It was, ulti it was, you know, sort of initially a death sentence. And now people can live if they have access to these life-saving drugs. Many people around the world do not. But it's been such a conundrum trying to figure out the key to this virus. Why is that? Well, there are several reasons why elimination and cure have been so difficult. One is the virus has the capacity to change its coat. So during the process of even low-level growth and replication, the virus can change its form, essentially being a chameleon. The other big issue, even though we've been able to treat successfully with antiretroviral therapy, all we've done is induce a latent condition or decrease the amount of virus that's circulating in plasma and in tissue and so being restore the immune system and allow our patients to live a healthy and long life. So we've changed it from a death sentence to a chronic disease. But what we have in the most significant part in viral elimination is the virus is latent. It exists in the host gene network in a dampened form that can escape any type of immune system or immune response elicited against it. Neutralizing antibodies are used to dampen new infections, but the virus itself can grow with as the cells grow. So when we're trying to eliminate virus, we have to go down into the latent reservoir and actually work to eliminate any residual virus that can re recondition or, or regrow, so to speak, uh, after the drugs have stopped. Yeah, I know a virus is, is just what it is, but when, you, when I hear, you know, talk of HIV, it almost seems like it's diabolical. It almost seems like it's intelligent, um, the way it's been able to be so uh, evasive. Dr. Howard uh, Gendelman, uh, amazing research that you guys are doing, and I look forward to seeing the next chapter of that. Thank you so much. Thank you, Anne-Marie. Thank you for having me on the show.